Who is the most frightening serial killer in your opinion? Part 5. Please help us grow by subscribing our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. A guy I used to work with at Best Buy. He would tell us stories about his time in Iraq and how much he would enjoy combat. He was a sharpshooter, and his stories would very clearly highlight his enjoyment in the lives he took. The last conversation I had with him was during a 4th of July work party where he expressed the thing he loves most about the holiday. He loved that everyone would automatically thank him for his service without knowing that the part he loved most about the service was the lives he took. He quit before the company could fire him. He's still out there and probably still showing off his tattoos and relishing in the mountains of praise he constantly gets for having passed military service. Account 2. No question. Richard Speck. He killed those eight nurses when I was a kid, nine years old, and I have never forgotten the headlines in the St. Louis paper showing the pictures of the nurses. It was the scariest thing I had ever seen, and it upset me for the longest time. Account 3. One of the most infamous and frightening serial killers, in my opinion, is the perpetrator behind the murder of Elizabeth Short, famously known as the Black Dahlia. Short's brutal killing remains unsolved to this day, leaving a haunting legacy of mystery and horror. Her severely mutilated body, with a Glasgow smile carved into her face, shocked the nation and sparked intense public interest. Despite extensive investigations, the killer has never been identified or brought to justice. The fact that such a heinous crime could go unpunished adds to the terror of the case. Short's tragic story, continues to captivate the public imagination, fueling countless theories and speculation about the identity of her killer. The unsettling possibility that the perpetrator may have evaded justice due to wealth and privilege only adds to the chilling nature of the case. Account 4. The one I knew, true long story, TLDR at the end. I grew up in Wichita, Kansas. My siblings and I grew up taking piano lessons from a lady who attended our church. We would mow her lawn and other odd jobs to pay for the lessons since she was an older so-how lady who needed help around the house. Kind of like our adopted grandma. Well, during the long afternoons mowing and waiting for our turn for lessons, we got to know her neighbor. Dennis Rader was his name, generally considered a stand-up member of the community who was involved in the local Boy Scouts, city council, and more. Turns out he was BTK, which stand for Bind, Torture, Kill. We learned when he is as arrested and convicted that he killed like 10 women or something. Some of them he killed multiple times with reviving them and killing again. TLDR. Our piano teacher's next-door neighbor was BTK Dennis Rader. Account 5. Bruce MacArthur. The guy from Toronto, Canada. He would meet other mean on a gay dating app, bring them to his apartment, kill them, and chop them up, but it gets worse. He was a landscaper, so he would hide the bodies in people's backyards, and he did this for a few years. When caught, it was estimated that 11 were killed, but only 9 were found. I would hate if the police came to my door saying there was a chopped-up person under my backyard. Police arrested him during one of his hookups, likely saved the other guy's life. Not that they handled the case very well from the start, unfortunately. Account 6 I'm very fascinated by serial killers, and why there are so many from California specifically, and I'm pretty sure I know most of the famous ones. I've noticed Russia has some seriously deprived ones, though. There's Andrei Chikatilo, the Rostov Ripper, killing over 50 people, a lot of them were kids, pretty horrific details, and you should check out the picture from his trial. Then there's Alexander Pachushkin, the chessboard killer, murdered 49 people but tried to raise the count to 64 to mock the number of squares on a chessboard. Also terrifying to think about, these two were killing within the same time period. Account 7. The Iceman, Richard Kuklinski, dude had some profoundly fucked up ways of killing people, such as binding the victims and leaving them in caves to be eaten by rats. Read a really good book on him by Phil Carlo, who I believe was able to interview him for the writing of the book. He would kill anybody who rubbed him the wrong way over the smallest of things. He claims to have killed over 200 people, and while a good portion of it was for mob work, it was how he scratched that itch to take another life. 
Account 8. Ted Kaczynski. His manifesto is full of near-prophetic warnings about the negative implications of technological encroachment into everyday life. His lifestyle predicted future trends in minimalism and survivalism. His philosophy is eclectic in origin, yet cohesive in ideology. I find him tremendously relatable based on his writings. And then he sent bombs through the mail to blow up whoever happened to be working in the mailroom at a variety of airports and universities. He scares me most because he's not some seemingly alien, emotionless killer, but someone who I feel like I would meet and befriend in local community activism or at university. He was a genius in multiple areas, went to Harvard to study math at 16, got swept up in government LSD mind control trials while there, and over several years came up with some highly socially conscious ideologies while simultaneously killing people. As someone who has always wanted to run away and live in self-sufficient isolation in a cabin doing psychedelics and living off the land, his story serves me a very personally relevant cautionary tale. Account 9. Arthur Shawcross is a new one I learned about through LPOTL, and he's pretty terrifying. He was from my hometown of Rochester, NY. Clearly remember the killings. He was another one who tried to maintain the mask of sanity, though the post-arrest interviews I've seen of him, you can see that mask slipping. Shed no tears when he died. Account 10. I would have to say Georgia Tan. She kidnapped and sold hundreds of babies and young children with help from her accomplices, refused to properly feed them and get them necessary medical treatment when they were sick, kept them all crammed together in a room even when they had contagious illnesses, and killed the sickly ones and the ones she deemed undesirable. One such way she would dispose of them was she, or one of her workers at her request, would leave them outside in the sun to slowly bake to death. She was called the mother of modern adoption and received heaps of praise from well-known public figures of the time, including Eleanor Roosevelt. And she never got caught because she was in politicians' pockets as well as the police. Her horrible crimes and her true nature only came to light after she died from cancer, and everyone that worked for her spilled the beans once they found out. Every time I hear about that woman, I get sick to my stomach and get angry at the fact that nobody did anything to stop her. Not one person. Account 11. When my dad was around 14, 1964, he was walking home from a friend's house in Moston one day when a car pulled up alongside him. There was a man driving and a woman in the back seat, and they tried to get him in the car. Fortunately, a group of people walked around the corner at the same time, and my dad shouted and made a load of commotion, and the car drove off pretty quickly. To this day, my dad is convinced it was Brady and Hindley, and has often wondered how close he came to being a newspaper headline. Account 12. Although technically not a serial killer, the shit that Adam Lanza said to his victims during the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting shakes me to my core. A student who was interviewed by police who was hiding in a room next to the classroom where the majority of kids died said that when he pressed his ear against he wall the kids were hiding in the classroom's bathroom, he could hear Lanza screaming, shut the fuck up and look at me, to crying, screaming children. Another student heard one of his classmates yell, I don't want to be here. And Lanza replied, well, you're here, before opening fire. Doesn't help that Lanza is one of the most creepy and weird-looking MF I've ever seen. Account 13. The shoemaker, Joseph Callinger, gave me nightmares. The descriptions of his mental illness and his delusions, plus all the abuse he went through as a child, was too fucking much. He was a grade-A nutcase through and through. I wonder how much of it he even realized wasn't right. Account 14. Probably Fritz Harmon. Apparently, he killed quite a few young folks before chopping them up and disposing of the bodies. He killed them either by strangling them or ripping their throats out with his teeth. So that's horrifying. And then there were rumors he sold some of those body parts. He dismembered as meat. Account 15. The Oakland County child killer, who was never caught. It was very likely Chris Bush. The killing stopped after he, allegedly, committed suicide, but he had help in high places. The detail that does it for me? The fried chicken. If you know this case, you know what I'm talking about. 